Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having an amazing day and thanks so much for joining me for another art video. Sketching figures is something that I've done for many years and in my opinion, drawing or painting the human figure, portraits, anything anatomical for that matter, is probably one of the most challenging things that an artist can decide to draw or paint. And I still have so much progress and so much improvement that I want to keep making. But what I have found is that as I continue challenging myself with this kind of subject, the skills that I build up really permeate into my other drawings and paintings. So this is the kind of personal practice that is ongoing for me that I'm always doing behind the scenes in my sketchbook. As I've continued sharing these sketches on Instagram, over on my website and other places, I've continued receiving questions from artists getting started with figure drawing, asking me how I personally got started with this subject and asking for advice in terms of what topics to cover and what exercises to work on in order to build a solid foundation for themselves. What resources or books did I personally use to advance my skills? Which, by the way, it was mostly books by Andrew Loomis and George Bridgman. I'm going to make sure to leave links to my favorite books down below in the description box in case you'd like to go and check them out. This said, I did not start with those books until after I learned and practiced with the exercises that I'm going to be sharing with you today. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the type of exercises that I did as a total beginner getting started with figure drawing. I'm going to take you through my sketching process for two quick figures and for both, we're first gonna be doing an armature sketch to understand the pose on hand, and we're then going to be moving on to creating a more fleshed out sketch. I'm gonna make sure to leave links to the reference photos that you're gonna see me use in these exercises down below in the description box of this video in case you'd like to download them and try these poses out for yourself. And before jumping into today's exercises, I would highly recommend checking out another video that I shared on figure drawing for beginners a few weeks ago. In that past video, I explained all about basic body proportions, which I really recommend you stem from, and other key pieces of information that I feel are important that you know about before getting into the exercises that I share with you in this video. The link to that video will also be left down below for you. All right, so without much further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight in. Um, I'm going to be starting with my HB, creating my, my line work as lightly as I can, though I am going to make it darker than what I would usually do on my own, just so that you guys can see what I am doing. But once everything looks good to me, I'm going to be switching on over to my 4B, which is a softer pencil grade, so that I can just add a little bit more contrast and more expressive, looser kind of line work on top of that preliminary sketch. Um, with this softer pencil grade. Now, for today's sketches, my objectives are to create a figure drawing that shows movement that is dynamic, completely freehand, that is believable in terms of those proportions, that shows effective shapes. Those are my main objectives. I am not going to be moving past this very much at all. I am not going to be adding tons of detail or shading or texture uh, because those are not my objectives for this. And as I've shared with you in the past, it's so, so important that you have specific objectives. Focus on those. And once you've succeeded at those, if you wanna push past that, if you wanna go ahead and add more details or shading or things like that, then you can certainly do it. It's up to you. I also have a soft graphite eraser on hand and I have my metallic sharpener. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm gonna be using for today's sketches. Okay, so this is the very first pose that I'm gonna be working with. And as I said, I am first gonna be doing a quick little armature to make sense of the pose. And then I'm gonna move on to actually creating a second version in which I'm gonna be fleshing it out a little bit more. But first, it's, it's just so useful to get started with a quick little armature and you really cannot do armatures enough. So let's go ahead and do that. So for more dynamic poses, I like getting started with the flow line. So the flow line that I see right here, it's something like this. If I imagine her spine, it would be doing something like that and then going down to her back leg, which is sustaining the majority of her weight. 
I'm going to be adding in the head. And you can add it in in two separate little shapes, the cranium and then the jaw. Or you can do just one simple shape, it doesn't really matter. After this, I find it super helpful to go ahead and create the shoulder line. It's actually a little bit more tilted, it's something like that. And the hip line. So the hip line would be somewhere here. So notice how this one is going up and this one is going down. I am staying away from creating flat horizontal or perfect horizontal lines here because that is not going to lead to a dynamic looking figure, okay? So notice the shoulder line and notice the hip line. And then once you have that in, it's easier to go ahead and start creating those blocks and her, her body is tilted forwards a little bit. Notice that. This can be the top, uh, the top part of her torso. You can make it all blocky the way that I have here, or you can actually make it a little bit more like the rib cage. That's completely up to you. Okay, and for her hips, there would be something like this. Once you have those major body uh, masses, the head, the, the rib cage, and the hips, you can start placing the little landmarks, the joints, This leg is going out like so. Have another knee. Then we have this foot over here. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. Okay, so now the arms. Sometimes I like starting by placing the shoulders as a slightly larger circle. The arm going backwards, there is a lot of foreshortening in this arm going back. And this one is coming down. Visualize the location of the, of the elbow, okay? So even though you can't see the elbow right here because she's wearing longer or three-fourth sleeves that is covering up the elbow, based on the proportions that you've learned so far, visualize where the elbow would be located. And that's why knowing about body proportions and just general anatomy is so important. So there we go, that's the armature for this first figure. So we started with the flow line, brought the flow line down to the leg that is supporting the majority of her weight. And then the second thing that I did was I created these two lines, the hip line and the shoulder line. You also want to notice that because in dynamic poses, rarely are they both going to be straight horizontal lines, okay? You want to notice that tilt and the relationship between them. Remember the twist and how they can compress against each other on one side or another side and try to notice these things in your figures. And then after that I added in the oversimplified rib cage and hips as big kind of blocky geometric -y kind of uh, forms which you can decide if you want to just make them more organically shaped like a rib cage and you can also, at this point, if it's helpful for you, is you can also actually make them more 3D, 3D shape boxes, you know? If that is helpful for you in just helping you understand how much of that side plane you're able to see versus the, the front plane or the top plane, do that as well. The only reason why I'm not doing that is because already I have enough practice that I can visualize that in my head as I am doing all of this. But all of these tools that I am offering you are so, so helpful. And if you don't have enough practice with them already, then make sure that you do get enough practice because you're not going to have to actually draw this out later on after you've gained this knowledge and this practice. You're going to be able to 
uh, just draw the figure a lot more easily because all of this is going to be embedded in your head and you're going to be visualizing that naturally if that makes any sense. After that I added in the major landmarks, so all of the joints and the shoulders and I really took into account the the proportions that we have been studying so far that you know just making sure that things make sense it's a lot more difficult to acknowledge proportions you know if, if proportions are effectively created in a dynamic pose because things are covering each other up and there's a lot of foreshortening and distortion in that actual length of the limbs and stuff in the body this said it's important that you know that's why i started out these classes with that forward facing straight up and down uh, figure so that you can understand proportions and then once you know that then it's a lot more likely that you're gonna be able to take breaks from your sketching every now and then and just acknowledge if things make sense. So for example, with the forwards facing flat that we started learning proportions with, we could just go from top of the head to the crotch and the, from the crotch downward. But we cannot do that as easily here because her legs are a little bit spread apart this leg is farther behind so it's getting smaller and smaller as it distances away from us and this one is also not going to show its full length because it's coming towards us so it's foreshortened it's different so it's important to stem from those proportions from a forwards facing body because we're able to understand body proportions, but once we're doing more dynamic poses, we just have to use the references that we have on hand and kind of pair it with what we know about proportions and anatomy and just take a look at our drawing constantly to make sure that things make sense. But there's a lot more intuition and visualization that comes into play when it comes to this kind of thing. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now that we've made sense of this figure by drawing a basic armature, we're gonna go ahead and push it further just a little bit more. So again, I'm gonna get started with my initial flow line. A lot of curves in there. And then once I have my flow line, I'm gonna draw my head shape. Her head is a little bit tilted. And then I'm gonna start adding in the, the shoulder line and the hip line. Once I have that in, I'm going to start drawing in the blocky shape for her upper torso, her rib cage. And her hips are somewhere over here. Okay, so big slant, big slant there. I have the major body masses already down for me. Because of how her body is moving, I can barely see her neck. I can mostly see it over here on this side. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in little circles for the joints. So I have the, the shoulder, which is very close to her head over here. And then the other shoulder is way down here. And her just noticing the the distance between the different body parts noticing where the the elbow is where the wrist is this elbow over here is somewhere there and then the wrist that is going away from us is somewhere over here then her knees are here the other one is going straight out. We have another one here, and the ankle joint is somewhere around here. Okay, so for this one, I'm not gonna be laying down any more lines because I'm gonna be fleshing this out a bit more, and I'm just gonna have more to erase, so I'm gonna just skip that step. So I'm gonna go ahead and start fleshing out her body based on the shapes of her silhouette and the shapes that I'm able to see in the reference photo. This arm. getting smaller and smaller as it moves away from us. It's actually a little bit lower than what I initially did here. That's okay, we can refine along the way. Continue noticing the differences between your, your sketch and your reference photo. 
Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Her back is going down, curving down. We have this arm here. can start erasing the lines that I don't need anymore. And then her torso here. I'm gonna start erasing the lines that I don't need anymore. This foot is kind of flat here. Notice the shapes, guys. Notice the shapes. The more you learn about anatomy and the more you observe, the more you study references and observe people around you, the easier it's going to be for you to decipher all of those curves throughout the body and the easier you're going to be able to make them happen in your drawing. Okay, so everything's looking pretty good to me. I'm acknowledging the proportions overall. Relatively believable here. I'm going to erase the rest of the guidelines and little circles that I had created for myself. There we go. I've made sure to draw pretty lightly so that I can erase mistakes. I think her breast here is a little bit too low. You'd have contour lines going all down her body. And hopefully it can help you visualize the limbs as having 3D form, as opposed to being flat shapes. Now, if I wanted to take this even further and add in a little bit more detail, maybe her clothes, I could just start adding that in. Remember how important it is to choose good reference photos, especially at this point in time where you're really trying to make sense of that anatomy. Make sure that you're picking out photos in which you're actually able to see the shapes of those muscles, the shapes of those different body parts. Otherwise, it's gonna be very difficult for you to get as much from the exercise as you could. And later on, once you've understood anatomy a little bit better, you can really start just making up for the information that you're lacking. And you'll be able to draw figures, you know, even from imagination, a lot more easily and in a more believable way. Okay, I'm gonna switch on over to my 4B and I'm just gonna do some quicker line work here, more expressive, looser. Now that everything looks pretty good to me in terms of the overall pose and those proportions and those shapes, I'm going to allow myself to go in a little bit more uh, loosely and kind of more expressive with my lines. Just doing some quick hatching here to add a little bit of quick shading into this sketch. Changed her hair there. <laughs> okay, so this is pose number one and we're gonna be moving on to the next. So let's go ahead and do the simple armature first so that we can make sense of this pose. That's the flow line. I'm gonna be adding in the head and her head is slightly tilted in this one. The shoulder line and the hip line.
we do see a bit of the side plane of her torso. So if this was, it's basically the same thing. It's just that I left it in a flat shape here. And over here, I'm actually gonna make more of a 3D boxy looking form. So notice that twist that is happening. Notice how the top of her torso is more like this. So this is the front of her torso right here. And we're able to see a bit of the side plane where the arm is coming out. Her, her shoulder is here and her arm is coming out like that. But then when it comes to the, the bottom part of her torso, the hips, the hips are mostly facing this way, not forward. So for the hips, if I were to make a box like this, then we would see mostly the side plane of the box and just a bit of the front plane. So this is the front plane. Okay, so that's very important for us to notice the relationship between these two forms and how they're twisting. It's very important that you acknowledge what's the front plane of the different body masses, what's the side plane, and how much of the front plane are you able to see um, when compared to the side plane. So now that I have the major body masses drawn in, and I think I have to make this, this curve less prominent. I made it too long there. There we go, that's more like it. So now that I have my, my flow line, I have my largest body masses, and I have my head, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in the joints. So for the joints, let's start with the with the shoulders. So we have one shoulder here, we have another one here, and then I'm gonna place the little elbow. Just noticing the distance between the head and the elbow in the photo, and that's where I'm trying to lay down that little elbow. Try to acknowledge the distance between the head and the wrist there so that the proportions look uh, somewhat believable and the arms don't end up just being way too long. So we have the wire frames for the arms there. I'm just gonna add a little shape for the hands. And here we have another hand. And then I'm gonna move down and add the knees and the ankles. So what I was saying before is how with this particular pose, yes, she's rotated in different ways, but she is primarily standing straight up and down. So for this one, it could come in handy to measure from the top of her head to her crotch and then down like this. And then if I make a little kind of uh, tick mark or guideline for myself right there, there is a better chance that I'm not gonna make the legs way too short or way too long. So I can, you can use that um, measuring kind of uh, guide if it makes sense with the pose that you're trying to draw. In this case, however, her feet are kind of on point there. She's gonna look taller because of that. Her, her feet, instead of coming out like this, they're gonna go down. So her figure is gonna look more elongated because of that fact. But still, laying down that little guideline right there is gonna be helpful. With all of these little tips and tricks and tools that I am sharing with you, it's important that you use your critical thinking skills when you come across a new pose and just sift through them so that you can choose the specific methods that make sense for what you're trying to draw. Her knee is going to be here and then her other knee is gonna be somewhere back here. And then her foot goes down. Kind of like that. And then the other one, let me cross it over here, is coming from here, going back. So here is the simple armature for pose number two. We started with the flow line, then we added in the head, then we created the shoulder line and the hip line. Then based on the shoulder line and the hip line, we added in the simplified top part of the torso shape, and then we added in the hip shape, 
And then with that in, we started adding in the shoulders and the joints, the elbows, the wrists, the knees, and the ankles and the feet. Let's go ahead and get started with the one that I'm actually going to be fleshing out a little bit more. So flow line, and then head with a slight tilt to it. Then I'm going to add the shoulder line, and then hip line. Notice the tilts. And then based on that, I'm going to add in the top torso and the bottom or the hips portion of the torso. So with that in, I'm going to start adding in the little shoulders. I'm going to add in the elbows. Actually, this is a little bit lower. Don't want to make the arms way too long there. There we go. Then I'm going to add in the wrists very simplified shape for the hands there i'm gonna take it down and using that same kind of little guide for me i'm gonna notice the distance between the top of the head and the crotch and i'm gonna bring it down from the crotch and i know that somewhere around here is where the ankle should be. So if I know that, I know that the knees should be somewhere around this height. So I'm gonna place the knee here, and then I'm gonna bring that other, that other um, wire, if you'd like to call it a wire, for the leg that is opposite to us. And I'm gonna bring that down. Okay, so let me erase this little mess that I created here. And then I'm gonna bring down the feet from there. So I'm gonna bring this down quite a bit more because she's standing on her tiptoes. And then based on this guideline that I placed, I'm just gonna go in and draw a little foot. And for this one, they're actually rotating differently, the two feet. So I'm gonna pay more attention to that in this in this second drawing. So we see more of the front of her foot in this one versus this one. When I actually draw in the leg, it's gonna be easier to notice, but this, this foot has more of the front showing. I'm gonna notice that a little bit more when I do my fleshing out right here. I'm gonna start still using my HB. I'm gonna pay attention to the shapes created by, notice the silhouette, notice the bony parts, notice the muscles, and try to recreate those shapes that you see in your reference, okay? She's wearing her hair down, so I cannot really see her neck very much, but I know from what we've been studying so far in terms of the proportions of the neck when compared to the head, how it should be somewhere around there. And then I'm just gonna bring out what I know about the shoulders since they are covered with her hair. I'm gonna bring that out. Just notice the shapes here, notice the muscle. Notice where things taper in, where they get wider. Notice bones, notice muscle. This section right here is the side of her torso. So where you see her armpit right here, this is the side of her torso. And this is the front. What I was mentioning in the previous class is you wanna notice, imagine a line going down her rib cage, like right down the middle of her rib cage. If I drew that line, it would be somewhere here. So this section right here is a front plane and this is the side plane. So it's all about noticing those twists, right? So we're able to see more of the front plane in the top, um, top part of her torso, her rib cage section versus her hips. In her hips, we're actually seeing more of her side plane than of the front plane. They're connected, but they're, they're separate. Okay, I'm gonna start erasing a few lines here. I'm trying to draw as lightly as possible, but I still want you guys to be able to see what I am doing. And they've served their purpose, so I can start erasing them. Gonna 
erase these, these lines. Trying to notice the muscles and bones. Muscles and bones. Try to see the difference between them. So I notice that I need to bring this foot out a little bit more. And the other leg, so I'm noticing where it starts, where her, her back thigh, or that back leg starts. Going down like that. Let me fix this foot a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and add just the, um, the middle of her face here. If you want to add contour lines, that's all it is, right? Acknowledging that kind of cylindrical form created in the limbs. I think her arms a little, are a little bit too long. I'm gonna bring them down, bring the hands down. I'm gonna switch on over to my other pencil. You can feel free to erase the lines that you no longer need. The head is another thing that we often want to draw in very, very straight up and down just because it's easier for a brain to draw it that way. And we really have to acknowledge the position of the head in these kinds of poses. Notice the hands. Even in these quicker sketches, acknowledge where the fingers start and where, where the base kind of back of the hand is, and that can help you just lay down a, a believable looking shape for the hand there in a very simple, quick kind of way like that. So notice what section of the hand it is that you're seeing. Is it the, the inner part? Is it the back of the, the hand? Um, remember the anatomy and the proportions that we were talking about for hands in that class and it'll help. I just love drawing dancer poses, ballerina poses. Unfortunately I couldn't find one of a male. I really looked but most males wear looser clothing, even lots of male dancers and so I didn't want to pick those photos, especially for these initial classes with people wearing looser, baggier clothes, because you're able to see that the shapes throughout the body so much more easily when the, the clothes of the person are form-fitting. Remember that when you're choosing your reference photos to work with. Okay, so here's pose number two. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please, make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.